Hey you right guys, Trace Munches Joe here and we're back. It's been a whole year, well over a year I think, since we did the tier list for every single TV show that I've ever watched and we ranked them. Uh, we've got, I think over, these are all the ones at the bottom here that I'm going to be adding today. But So I think when they're included we'll have over 300 shows in total. I could be off by a few but I'm pretty sure it's over 300 and over 100 of those are shows that I've reacted to. So quite a lot to talk about we've got some changes on a lot of these obviously i've seen quite a few more episodes to a lot of these shows so uh, we're going to be changing around the list quite a bit and then like i say adding i don't know however many there are there <laughs> like th over 30 that we've done in the past year or something so uh yeah buckle up i'm not going to edit this too much it's going to be just a lot of me rambling about these shows um not like i say not much editing or anything at all so sit back get a, get a drink i've got like a whole big old bottle of glass coke here to get me through this because my throat you probably can hear it's a bit raspy today but, uh, it's like an old man trying to get up out of a seat that's what this is probably going to sound like for the next hour or however long so you might have to bear with me sometimes but uh yeah we've i'm gonna just change this a little bit because we've got like 10 out of 10 shows then eight to nine shows that i consider like an eight out of ten or a nine out of ten i want to split these i want to get the shows that i consider eights and the shows that I consider nines, and then here I want to split this as well, and then I think we'll keep three and four, because that's kind of fun, there's not too many in there, so give me a minute. So I've just split it in like how I felt like I probably would have felt at the time, what, <laughs> trying to put my mind back uh, a whole year or whatever, because like I say, a lot of these shows I've watched quite a bit of since the last one, so we'll go through those first, and then we'll add all the new shows. So let's start at the top, might as well start at the top, or do we start at the bottom? Let's start at the bottom. Let's start with the worst. Um, Attack on Titan. Let's get this out of the way. <laughs> uh, I put it in more bad than good. Attack on Titan, which has just finished. It had its final episode yesterday as of recording this. I've not watched it, um, but I have given the show another shot. I did say last time I recorded that I would give Attack on Titan another chance because that was the one uh, that pretty much everyone disagreed with i knew everyone would even when i was saying it, i was like i know i'm wrong for thinking this but i d i had to be honest when i originally watched seasons one and two of attack on titan back in god season one i probably watched in 2015 season two was when it came out in 2017 i want to say i just was not into it i didn't get the hype um i didn't care about any of the characters i did not care about the story i thought the animation was fine <laughs> again this is me at the time however however now I have given the show another go, um, and I love it. I think it's incredible. I'm on... I've just done the... No, I've, I've got two episodes left of season three, so I'm about to go into the fourth season, and that has, like, 30 episodes or something, and then I would have finished. So I'm getting there. I'm getting kind of towards the end. Um, I love the characters so much more this time around. I'm actually invested in the storyline, the animation. I didn't love the animation in season one. It looked a bit cartoon-esque. I don't know. It looks not bad. It just... I, I didn't love it. The, seeing the kind of improvement in animation throughout the seasons has been a lot better uh, the music absolutely but the music might be the best thing about the entire show to be honest um so yeah i was wrong about attack on titan i knew i was when i put it in there but like i said i had to be honest about kind of how i felt about attack on titan so this is probably gonna have the biggest jump out of any show on here to be honest but we're gonna put it in probably the top of eight for now uh, I want to see, like, I've ha I've just got past the slowest part of Attack on Titan, which is the first half of Season 3, so I've, it's picked up a lot more in the second half, and I didn't mind the first half of Season 3 as well, but uh, yeah, so I'm waiting for that to really kick back in in Season 4 to show more of the story, but I think right now this potentially could go into the 9s, but I want to see, like, the full story, I don't know. Uh, I could put it at the bottom of 9, though, for now. No, not quite. I'd, I'd be forcing it, but it is at the top of eight. Uh, great, great shells. Yeah, 100% wrong about, about that one. Um, Elite, I avoided this season. We would have had another one under our belt, but I I was debating doing it, and I know it got renewed for a season eight, which is apparently meant to be the last season, finally, but I could not do it. I just, I'm so over Elite. Um, I watched the trailer for it, and the trailer was just full of more new characters and i'm just like i can't be bothered and they were doing like one of them's died like, okay the sixth time in a row we're doing someone that the new cast has died it's just these characters that no one cares about i don't even really care about the characters that have been there for three seasons now like omar's coming back and it's like i don't care about omar i thought he was terrible in the last season he was in so why do i care um so i, I 
officially i really like to especially with reactions at least try to finish a show up but i just could not do it i was so done with elite so uh that i don't think it's trash i think seasons one to two and three kind of still put it above trash but it is definitely more bad than good so that's staying there um yeah not care about i haven't seen rewatched any of these so they're pretty much the same how i'd feel uh, these are all still decent. I'm surprised we haven't had season two of All of Us Are Dead yet. I really thought we would have had that by now. Um, three minutes of life. Okay, Dexter New Blood. I believe when I did this, there was a couple of episodes of New Blood left, or had we finished it? Uh, either way, uh, very bad show. Um, the more I think about Dexter New Blood, the more it really upsets me. I don't want to put it in more bad than good because I do think there were some good episodes in there. I think it has the Game of Thrones factor though, where it is like the ending. The, like the last episode completely just ruins ever wanting to rewatch Dexter New Blood, and uh, yeah, it's just so disappointing how they kind of ended this show. I think they were setting up for like his son to kind of have a spin off show that never got picked up. <laughs> um, and Showtime are terrible as well, Showtime with reactions and stuff, so they can do one. <laughs> we'll get to that when we talk about Yellow Jackets, I'm sure. Let's put it like I say, it did have some good episodes in there. I still think Dexter is a really good character, so. We'll put it at the top of meh. Just a little bit down. It's just very disappointing how they kind of ended that. Uh, Cuphead, I still think it's decent. I, I think there's some really great episodes in there, but then a lot of... You know, it's, it's episodic, so you, you are going to get episodes in there that aren't, aren't great. I've not rewatched any of these. Uh, Alice in Borderland, we had season two since we lasted this. Um, I like season two. It got renewed for a season three, which I'm a bit confused about because i thought they kind of wrapped it up in at the end of season two but i guess we're getting another season so we'll see what kind of happens there but I, yeah i like the characters i like the story i think it's a little bit ridiculous sometimes but that's the nature of the show i guess uh i do prefer it to all of these behind it so we'll keep it there um <laughs> jujitsu kaisen this is another one that's going to fly up the rankings i do stand by my kind of unlike attack on titan i stand by my thoughts on season one i thought season one was fine I was not blown away by Jujutsu Kaisen when I watched season one. However, and some of you might be have been watching it as well, season two is incredible. Season two is absolutely incredible. I think the first five episodes were really good, and then it kind of started building up more, and now we're in like the peak arc at the moment. The peak arc for, from what I've seen. Uh, there's characters I actually care about. The fights are incredible. We just had one of the best 1v1s <laughs> in the entire show so far, and every episode is like a cliffhanger. I'm actually looking forward to every Thursday to watch the next episode so Jujutsu Kaisen is going to fly all the way up again not I prefer Attack on Titan I definitely prefer Attack on Titan so we'll put it uh, it's better than Elf and Need it's better than yeah we'll, we'll talk about Black Mirror don't get don't get that wrong uh I prefer Midnight Mass I love Midnight Mass let's put it there so kind of towards the top of eight really great um that has room to even go even further to be honest but we'll see we'll see what happens uh Outer Banks we've had another season since but that's not really moved the dial for me. I think, see, a lot of people hate season three. I thought season three was pretty good, um, but just more of Outer Banks. <laughs> it's like what you've come to expect. Uh, we haven't done any of these, so they're all the same. None of these. Doctor Who. I was been doing reactions to Doctor Who for like a short minute, but I don't know. Because I've only seen the David Tennant season. So I'm basing this off the David Tennant seasons, which have like the Blink episodes and stuff like that. So maybe one day, but um, yeah, I've not I've not rewatched any Parks and Rec. I just kind of gave up on. <laughs> I've had enough of Parks and Rec to be honest. All right, Gilmore Girls. We've seen a lot more of since. So I think I had just finished season one. Or we were like a little bit in season two when we last did this. Now we're quite a few episodes into season four. So another good amount done. I am going to throw it up a bit more. Not a big jump i think i'm gonna throw it into the eights but maybe like the low eights maybe i would prefer it to modern family it's so much more funny I, where i was at like i, I didn't love lorelei lorelei kind of annoyed me I, i'd like some characters in there that i liked but i feel like now there's a lot more characters that i love i've got used to the formula of the show where it really is just a show about them living their lives there's nothing they really don't do anything super dramatic which i've really come to appreciate about the show of course it still has its dramatic moments but uh, yeah, I love Emily. Lorelai has grown on me so much. I think she's a great, great character. Luke's amazing. Uh, you got the Jess and Rory drama that we've had since, of course, as well. So, yeah, I've come to really appreciate the formula of this show a lot more. 
one. So I'm going to put it, let's go mid eights, maybe like here. Yeah. Hmm. I did throw it to, no, I don't know. Shit's Creek is really good. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy with that at the moment. And again, still room to maybe even go even further up, but that's kind of where I'm big, big kind of jump for me, considering how many shows there are. But rating wise, it was like a seven and now it's like an eight. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, what else we got? Uh, we've watched more. I think we had another season of Hearts. Well, we have had another season of Heartstopper since. I'm going to put it up. I think season two was, well, season two for me was definitely better than season one. Some things in there that I didn't love, which I mentioned in the reactions. I think there's some characters they just kind of rush their stories a little bit, but the chemistry between the two mains was far better in season two compared to season one, at least for me. I think the acting has improved from pretty much everyone uh, dramatically <laughs> um, between the seasons, and I'm actually excited for season three now to see what happens. So I'm going to put it in the eights, but probably low eights for now. Maybe up for dead it's, it's hard to compare these maybe there yeah low eights but yeah big jump for me i think it's a big improvement from season one hopefully we can keep that going uh new girl with all oh fruits baskets actually have finished since doing this last time so uh that's gonna go in the eights definitely i don't love it as much as attack on titan or jujitsu kaizen but still a really good i like i felt like i probably Probably should prefer this to Attack on Titan or Jiu-Jitsu because I I like romance animes. I like my thing. They're so they're so much fun. Um, but I don't know. Those two shows are just <laughs> too good. So we'll put it in the eights. Probably low eights if I'm being honest. Probably I preferred it to Steins Gate. So let's put it there. Yeah, the third season really threw this one up for me. That was a really great season and wrapped it up really well. So I definitely recommend Fruits Basket. Um, New Girl, like I say, we've watched a lot more of, but yeah, I feel like this would have gone up, but the second half of season four was the weakest the show has ever been for me. Just like a ton of six out of ten episodes, like just fine, you know, doing the numbers kind of episodes. So I might just keep it where it is. I feel like there have been some episodes and stories since doing this last time that would have put it up more. But then, including in this time, <laughs> is kind of all of... Well, not all of Season 4, more so the second half of Season 4, uh, which I haven't loved, to be honest. So, I'm probably just going to keep it there, to be honest. I still think it is good. I do think it is a good show. But I'm hoping Season 5 is stronger and just kind of picks up a bit more. So, which it... The way Season 4 ended, it kind of looks like that will be the case. So, fingers crossed. Uh, the Witcher's going down. <laughs> Let's get that out of the way. Season 3 was... That is, season 3 of The Witcher is one of those seasons that I forgot about the season as soon as it ended. As soon as it ended, I've not even really thought about it since. It's just like fizzled away. Um, I think the so this the show has had enough time to really prove itself to people now that it's like a, a great show and it's just not stuck to that at all. Um, like Looking back at all three seasons, I do think season 1 was actually probably the, the peak of the show, which is really unfortunate because... While I didn't love season one, I felt like it was a really good starting point to really throw the show up into greatness, and it just has not been able to do that. So I do still like the characters of Geralt and Ciri and even Yennefer. I do think the characters are good, but the story is just so boring. It's just a really boring story. Like The politics are boring. Uh, like The main plot and the the uh, conflict between the villains and Geralt is just boring. So... And then you got a whole episode of Siri walking around a desert with a unicorn. It's like, oh my god. For your penultimate episode, by the way. So, it's going down. Um, I prefer it to Mob Psycho. I prefer it to that. I prefer it to that. I prefer it all of the dead, though. So, yeah. Still decent. Not terrible, but squandered potential, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, where were we? Yeah, I've not rewatched any of these. I do really want to give Friday Night Lights another chance because I feel like that could be a really great show but I just feel like I haven't seen enough of it to really throw it up. Young Royals, we've had season two since, but that was this time last year actually, so it was just after we did this, that season two of Young Royals came out. Um, season two it is season two, right? Yeah, season two. Season two is far weaker than season one. Um, I still think it's good, but I'm going to bring it down quite a bit I don't know, season two just kind of had like forced conflict between some characters and 
forced new love interests. It was like, oh, okay, we're doing this, I guess. It just got very by the books standards. I think August is still like a really interesting character. Uh, he probably held season two up a bit more for me than it would have been without him. But other than that, uh, maybe I prefer Dead to Me at this point, so maybe there. Still good. I just think season two definitely brings it down a little bit for me. Uh, Bridgerton, we haven't had any more of since. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, One Tree Hill, we have finished since. I can't remember exactly what season we were on at this point, but I want to say probably we had like three seasons left or something like that. We have finished it since. Um, hmm. <laughs> one Tree Hill's a hard one because season eight was terrible. Season eight was like the worst of the show. But season nine, the final season, did bring it back quite well. I wouldn't say it was like the best season. I wouldn't say it was it, like. The final season was one of the middle seasons for me, but it did have one of the best episodes, if not arguably the best episode of the entire show as well, which was uh, Danny Boy, if you know the episode. That was amazing. That was a 10 out of 10 episode for me. So, And then the actual finale was really good as well. So I don't know. I didn't love the last season as a whole, but it did have some really incredible moments in there. And One Tree Hill as a whole, seasons one to four are just nostalgia great i think they're all great seasons so much fun to be had in those seasons so many great characters um and lot, a lot of car crashes you can't forget about the car crashes in montreal i think we had at least one car crash every single season apart from one season or like a car incident where someone got ran over or something uh every single season apart from one season maybe two but out of nine seasons <laughs> that is wild so but yeah i love montreal i'm gonna keep it I prefer it to Shadowhunters, I prefer it to Scamatalia, I prefer it to the 100, hmm, The Walking Dead, I do love, like, Prime The Walking Dead was something special, I really look back fondly on like Prime Walking Dead, seasons 1 to 6 of The Walking Dead is just, I actually really want to go back and rewatch Prime Walking Dead and just stop <laughs> at the point, if you know, you know the point, <laughs> just stop there, but um, I might bump it up actually. Tree Hill, let's. Because I did throw it to Fruits Baskets, I did throw it to Squid Game, I throw it to Vamp, so. Um, better than Skins. These are kind of two similar posters actually, so they'd look good side by side. But I do. Again, this is all like just the feel of. Uh, seasons 1 to 4 is what's really throwing this up as high as it is. I do throw it to Gilmore Girls overall. Not the second half of Tree Hill. Second half of Tree Hill would be bottom 7. But season one to four and six, season six as well, included, uh, really throws this one up for me. So we'll go. <laughs> it's going up way higher than I thought it would, to be honest. Uh, I just look at the shows it's next to, and I'm like, I prefer it to that. I prefer it to that. Yeah, I prefer it to that. I don't prefer it to Midnight Mass, though. I think like it's it's, it's just... Some of these shows are so hard to compare. It's like, how do you compare Midnight Mass to One Tree Hill? <laughs> it, it, uh, I don't know. I don't think it's this great, to be honest. It's just I'm looking at the shows it's next to, and I do prefer it. But like some of these shows, it's like, Don't Fuck With Cats is three episodes. How do you compare that to 150 episodes <laughs> of a teen drama? So we'll put it there for now. Maybe we'll swap it up uh, when I think about it a bit more. But Euphoria, have we had season two? Si yeah, we had, because that was... That's what brought it down from the eights. So that can say I'm gonna put Walking Dead above it though. Some of these shows is like after a year passes, you really think on it a bit more. I'd throw the 100 to Euphoria at this point. But yeah, I'd throw Euphoria to Scamatalia, so that's fine. Right, into the eights. I think, yeah, into the eights. Not done any of the Oh Vamp Diaries. Um we've watched a lot more since of. I think we were midway through season three when we did this, and now we're about just over halfway through season five. So we've done a couple of seasons since. We would have finished season five and been in season six, but obviously we've had the originals um, kind of taking up a lot of those slots as well. Uh, I did mention in the originals, but I'll mention here as well, I do plan on having like the vamp and the originals both every single week, but I just want to get season five of vamp done and season one of the originals done, and then we'll... Because I feel like I'll be here for 20 years doing this whole universe otherwise. I really want to... I felt like we were on a roll with the vamp diaries, and then as soon as the originals got involved, which I love, I think the originals is great, but it has really slowed down the pacing of <laughs> getting through these shows. So I'm going to bring the vamp down a little bit. I don't, I think season five has probably been the weakest. Well, yeah, I'd say it has been the weakest of the show, but Catherine really, really helps with the season. Catherine is 
great. I think it's one of the most fun storylines they've had. I won't spoil it, but if you know the Catherine storyline of season five, uh, you know what I'm on about. So I'm going to bring it down a little bit, not too much. I still think it is mostly really good. Probably there. Yeah, I don't think it's quite as great. We were in peak, the Vamp Diaries, when I did this last time with the originals and Klaus and all that stuff. So that makes sense to bring it down just a tiny bit. Um, not done it. Oh, Sopranos. I did say I was going to rewatch The Sopranos last time. And I ha I've rewatched season one. I'm halfway through season two. I've taken a bit of a break from it. I think I last watched an episode maybe about two months ago. Uh, we, but I do want to get back to it. I was really, 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 really enjoying it. But then something else came up. I can't remember that. And it's one of those shows, once you just stop watching for a little bit, I think I need to go back and restart season two now. But uh, yeah, we are going to throw it up just a little bit. I, I won't put it in the nines just yet. Because again, I've only rewatched technically season one. But based on that alone, probably like there. So up a little bit. Probably still going to be one of those shows that goes into the nines at some point. Because I know like peak Sopranos is seasons four to six, I think most people say. So. Uh, when we get to that point. Uh, Naruto. Oh, Naruto. <laughs> I've been re-watching that. If you follow me on Instagram, you know I'd post every time uh, I'm re-watching like, a bulk of episodes. I think we do like... when I, I won't watch it for like ages, and then I'll do like 20 episodes in one day, uh, and I kind of show that on Instagram and stuff. But I love Naruto. It's so good. How I'm feeling about it now is going to change. I know that when I get more through the show, but... I really forgot how well paced like original Naruto is. I'm not including Naruto Shippuden in this because I haven't watched that and I'll get and that would be separate for me, I think. I wouldn't class that as Naruto Unleashed, so that'd be a completely different ranking. But I'm what, fifty episodes in, I'd say now. And it's not they've had some episodes that I felt a little bit slow, of course, but I felt like the overall pacing of the show really hasn't slowed down at all. I think the characters are great, I think the music is I, I always loved the music ever since I was a kid from watching Naruto, but now really appreciate the music a lot. The music a lot more. I think the animation really holds up. Uh, it's still funny. The fights that they have, um, well, a bit limited in some of the animation they do, but some of it still looks incredible. Like what, twenty years later? So, uh, I'm definitely throwing it up into the nines for me. It a lot of that is the nostalgia I have with Naruto. I, I like I'm aware of that, but <laughs> it's just so good. It's so much fun. So, I'm gonna put it. Probably there. Yeah. Like I say, a lot of it is nostalgia. And I am only like... That could go back down when I watch more of it in the second half of Naruto I'm about to get into. So we shall see. But um, really great show. Uh, the Wire, yeah. I still haven't finished The Wire. I still have one season left. I think it's been a year. <laughs> I will get to it at some point. I've not rewatched really any of these. Arcane. I'm going to... I got a Jinx tattoo. I'll show you that on screen if I think, if I remember to put it in. So I did end up getting the Jinx tattoo, which I said I was going to do. Um, I can't stop thinking about Arcane. It's been like over a year since I reacted to it. Maybe coming up to two years. It was two years ago that it was released, but I didn't react to it when it first came out. So, uh, But yeah, I, I love Arcane. I think it's one of the best anime shows I've ever seen. So I'm going to throw this up to... Um there it's not as good as hunter x hunter so yeah i just when i first watched it in this time last year I was, I was like oh it's a great show i think it's great but now it's just one of those shows that i just keep thinking about i really want to go back and rewatch it as well just need season two we need season two i'm so excited um not seen banshee i really want to rewatch full metal alchemist at some point uh no that's a great romance anime. i was like trying to figure yeah that's a great romance anime one of my favorites clanad i'm bringing love down a little bit i rewatched the first episode and I think I did episode two as well of season one. Not as funny as I remember. I'm not lie. I'm not lie. Not as funny as I remember. So we're gonna bring it down into the eights. I still think it is great. Um, but I think nine's probably a little bit too high at this point. I remember when I first watched it in twenty when did it get released? Twenty sixteen or twenty fifteen, around that time. It was like when Netflix originals were very sparing. <laughs> like you'd get a new Netflix original maybe once a week and now you get like fifty every single day. So I remember when it came out, it just felt like a really unique and different show. At least, it probably wasn't, but at least it did for me. Um, now it just kind of blends into a lot of other things that I have seen. But I still think overall it is a really great show. I just think, like, looking back on it, it's probably not as funny as I remember it to be. 
Um, and this is why sometimes it's better to just leave some shows in the past. I don't think this is one of them. I'm sounding a little bit too harsh. I don't think this is one of those shows. Uh, but I, I need to fully rewatch the whole thing and then get a more definitive opinion on it. But I don't think it's a 9 out of 10. I think that's a little bit too high at this point. Uh, we've, of course, finished Friends since doing it. We were... How many seasons were we? I think we were on season 7 when we did this last time. So we finished all 10 seasons, of course. Rest in peace to Matthew Perry. Passed away, what was it, like two weeks ago now, which is wild. I can't, still can't believe that. That's like one of those celebrity deaths that's just like... Hit. Alan Rickman, for me. Chester Bennington. Um, and Matthew Perry, I feel, are like the three... Because Robin, when Robin Williams, he was like the big one for a lot of people, but I never grew up with a lot of Robin Williams films. But now I look back and I'm like, oh no, Robin. Yeah, I've seen a lot more Robin Williams films since, but I remember at the time when he passed away, it didn't hit too hard for me. But, uh, but yeah, Chester Bennington, Alan Rickman, and uh, Matthew Perry. Uh, very sad. So, but see, as for the actual show, not a 10. I know a lot of people want me to put it in the 10s. It's not going to happen. <laughs> um, I will keep it in the nines. I gave it a nine out of ten when I finished the show. To I know I say there's so much about Friends, but to say how many episodes they had of that show, and I'm still laughing at the stuff these characters are doing in season ten. Uh, and I know a lot of people like to shit on Friends and say it's, it's so not funny. Or I feel like a lot of people say Friends isn't funny and haven't even seen it. Um, I was probably that guy at one point, <laughs> to be honest. Maybe ten years ago, it's like yeah, Friends isn't even funny, and it's like. I've never seen an episode of Friends, I really can't say that. So, um, but having seen the entire show, and I got obviously, if like people have seen the sh whole show and think it's not funny at all, then fair enough, or a few episodes, or whatever. But my mum's one of those people, she gave Friends a go and just really didn't get into it. So, but for me, I think it's a really funny show. I think all the characters have great chemistry. Um, and like I said, being able to have that many episodes and still be as funny as it was, not as funny as it probably was in like Peak Friends, which was seasons, I'd say three to six, probably, but. 7 to 10. Um, still having great storylines as well. Some storylines in there that I didn't love overall. Uh, but very, very close to being a 10 out of 10 for me. But not quite. So we're going to put it... For me, it's better than Game of Thrones at this point. <laughs> Game of Thrones could have been in the 10s. I'd feel shameless so. though. So we'll probably put it there. Uh, like a 9.4 out of 10 if we're being really critical or something. So yeah, that's the definitive ranking of Friends. One of the best shows I've, react well, I've reacted to Avatar, Toradora I've technically reacted to, so Scam, Arcane, Sex Ed, but we'll talk about Sex Ed in a minute, uh, Shameless, so like, yeah, it's in the top 10 shows that I've ever reacted to, which is pretty good, so cheers to you guys for recommending that one, <laughs> recommending that hidden gem of a show. Uh, the Last Dance I've rewatched since, I rewatched this probably about a month ago now, I just felt like giving the last dance ago, you know, building back up to the new season of football, so, of, football of basketball. Um, so thought, let's just watch the last dance again. Maybe I'll watch it every single year or something, but uh, still an amazing, incredible show. I wouldn't really change the ranking on this too much, I think. I don't know, it's just such a, so well paced in every episode. I think there was like a couple of episodes that actually gave a higher rating to when I originally watched it. So uh, one of, if not the best, let me look. I don't know, the best documentary, not including documentary films, but documentary TV shows, I think is the best one I've ever seen. So, uh, based on these rankings here, unless I'm forgetting one, but uh, I'd, yeah, I'd keep it there. I really wouldn't change too much about it. I still think it's amazing. So, all right, this is us. We have finished This Is Us since. I probably had like a season and a half, couple seasons left when we did this last time. We have finished it. It's over. I miss it so much. <laughs> uh, perfect show perfect show and i believe did i say when i finished it it was maybe the best show i've ever reacted to i don't think i i think i said it almost was because i think avatar the last airbender still has that crown avatar the last airbender still has that crown of being a 10 out of 10 best show i've ever reacted to actually looking back at avatar which i really want to rewatch at some point it's like i really wish i showed that more in the reactions i think you don't realize sometimes how great a show is until you finish it uh, but this is us I, I think i've really let people know and let it show in my reactions how much a lot and i think i did an avatar as well but obviously that was five years ago at this point is my reactions have changed i hope they've changed a little bit since then um 
so yeah this is us i made very clear it's one of the best shows i've ever reacted to i think i said it multiple times i still stand by that after having finished it two months ago um so it's going into 10 out of 10s so i gave it a 10 out of 10 overall don't get me wrong i don't think it's technically a 10 out of 10 show i think i've said that multiple times like with lost and 24 that are up here as well they're technically not 10 out of 10 shows but as we've said before and as you guys know i'm sure i don't have to repeat that uh it's like my list and stuff and i know I, I was very self-aware that some of these aren't 10 out of 10s and this is us is probably one of those it's more like probably like a high eight or maybe a nine out of ten but i just love it so much i think it's such a special show and i don't think i'll react to a show quite like it for a long time so yeah this is us officially going into the elite goated shows 10 out of 10 congratulations <laughs> it ended so well as well i think if the ending they fumbled a bit, I'd have been a bit like, oh, this is shit. Like Game of Thrones and other shows we can talk about, I'm sure. Sex Education we'll get to, um, where they fumbled it a little bit. But the last season, I think the first half was like more of This Is Us. It's like, okay, great. The second half of the last season, oh my God. the tears were flowing. <laughs> so I know, again, I said last year, I'll say it again. I know it's one of the least viewed, I think the least viewed show on the channel. But even if you don't watch the reactions, just watch the show. You'll, you'll love it. So... Uh, he slams doors like a madman, you know. Um, yeah, ten out of ten. So shameless. I still need to get to shameless. I feel like I probably said this about Buffy and Shameless last time, but the reactions will reappear. Don't you worry, they're coming. They will come. They will appear. Just not right now. <laughs> I really want. I need to rewatch the stuff that I already watched. Is the problem? I can't just jump into what like near the end of season four on this and then the start of season five on this it's like i need to go back and rewatch the stuff which is the annoying part the office i'm going to bring down a little bit i don't think it's a nine um then um, no it's still a nine it's still a nine actually i'll take that back it's a tricky one because i feel like unlike friends the office does lose the charm quite dramatically actually um as it goes on but it is funnier than Friends. I would I will agree with that. Like the Office is funnier than Friends, and I think Michael Scott is maybe the best character in sitcom history. Don't shoot me. <laughs> I don't know. I, I know I've not reacted to it, so it's hard to like really get my opinions and thoughts on it across. But uh, I've rewatched it three times now, and I can never finish it because I think it just becomes so unfunny at a certain point. Like I really, the last two seasons, I think they really fumble it about. So I don't think they're terrible, but. They, it does lose that charm. So I think Friends is better storyline wise, probably. But The Office is funnier as a sitcom. It's a really hard one, Friends in the off versus The Office. A debate that would go until the end of time, I'm sure. Maybe I'll keep it there then. Maybe I'll keep it there. But the last two seasons are not good. <laughs> uh, sex Education is coming down. Oh my god, that. Guys. I'm still so upset about that final season. What was that? Season four? What a waste. What a waste. Look at where it was. It's the... Correct me if I'm wrong. The, yeah. As I said at the time, that was the best Netflix original I've ever seen. Well, Arcane's taken that spot now. So, Arcane is the best Netflix show I've seen. Sex Education, you're coming down. Still great. Seasons one to three still exist. So, that's wonderful. Season four, though, was so mid... They, and because it was the final season as well and really gave us nothing <laughs> really gave us nothing to work with and just so more new characters that are just unlikable that no one cares about like it, it is the general consensus that nobody cared about any of the new characters so it's coming down unfortunately oh I need to move Black Mirror as well uh, remind me <laughs> uh, let's put it like I say, seasons one to three still exist, so I'm not going to be too harsh on it, but... <coughs> it's such a shame, bro. I prefer to Jiu-Jitsu. I don't prefer to sex. Uh, One Tree Hill, though, at this point. Uh, Black Mirror can come down at this point. I'm so done with Black Mirror. We keep waiting for, like, the incredible episodes to come in. The new season did was better than the season before. Sure, but... Ugh. Still good. Still really good, so let's put it... It's just hard when you have to include, like, <sighs> seasons one to three are so good. And season four, actually, is really, really good. Five and six, though. Mm. <laughs> Let's go there. 
Top are really good still, but not. I don't think it's great at this point. There's too many mid to bad episodes at this point. Like the new season had two bad, bad episodes, and then a couple of mid ones in there. Then two great ones, I think. So a shame. I think that's everything that I've re watched. I'm gonna bring scam down a little bit, so I think I prefer those two, but just a little bit. Still a nine, still a nine out of ten. But I've not rewatched scam. I need to <laughs> again one of the shows that I need to go back to. I don't think it's essential that I need to go back to Scam, though. It's not, like, at the top of my list or anything. All right. So, oh, no. Succession, we have finished since. Uh, I said when I finished that, it's in my top five shows of all time. So, it's going at number five. So, the official five is Lost, Breaking Bad, 24, True Detective, Season 1, No Further, and Succession. And I'm going to bring Better Call Saul down below Avatar. Um, so, not too much removed there. And yeah, that's the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have nine shows in the ten out of tens. The in between, as I could argue, is more of a high nine, but it's so funny. The in between is so funny. I love it. All right, that's every show that we've kind of watched more episodes of, or that I've watched off camera, like Attack on Titan, that just moved around a bit. So time to add in all these new shows, all these gems of a show which are quite a few of i'm not gonna three six nine twelve thirty five fifteen thirty okay so like a lot <laughs> over 30 i thought maybe it'd be 30 but it, we're on over 30 with these okay so let's let's get a start the boys we've obviously done seasons one to three of since doing this we've reacted to all the episodes waiting for season four now i'm in the in the boat of waiting great show i think season three was probably the weakest for me but seasons with season three was still really good and seasons one two were great really really great especially season two i think um which is weird because i think season two is the lowest rated one so i might be in the minority with that one but i love season two really funny great characters great action um it just knows what it's doing it has, it has a good formula it carries it out really well and like even with season three even though i'm saying it's the weakest it's still Manages to pull that off pretty pretty well. So I'm going to go in the 8s. I don't think it's quite a 9 out of 10 just yet. I think it potentially could be. But it really depends what they do next with Season 4. If Season 4 is just kind of more of the same. I think people start to get not worried about it. But I, it's weird. It's like it has a formula that works. But at the same time I want them to kind of do something different with Season 4. Because like how many times can we do Homeland as the villain and... He's going around being a nuisance. I love Homeland. I think he's an incredible villain, but you can't just keep doing the same thing, which I think they know, and I think they'll change up a little bit on season four. So uh, it's better than Sex Education at this point. Better than Tree Hill. Not as good as Midnight Mass. So yeah, mid eights for me, mid to high eight. Uh, Vinland Saga. I've not watched season two yet, but I loved season one. I think I just started Vinland Saga when we did this last time. I was like a few episodes in. So yeah, finished season one. I think the second half of Vinland Saga is incredible. Uh, I think it gave quite a few episodes. Oh, not quite a few. Maybe like three episodes of 10 out of 10. And then quite a few 9 out of 10s. So I need to do season 2 at some point. I just haven't gotten around to it. I think we started it. We got like a few episodes into it. But uh, yeah, I need to catch up with that at some point. Um, no one really talked about season 2, which is weird. I remember when season 1 came out, everyone was talking about it. No one's really spoke about season 2 too, too much. Let's go... Oh, you as well. We've watched more you since. I just realised. I'm going to go bottom eight. So maybe here. I think it's a good spot. And then you. We've had another season off since. And it is going to bring it down. Still think it's mainly a good show. But I'm glad. Let's just say I'm glad season five is going to be the last season. Because how many. Come on now. Come on now. Um, not as good as Prison Break. Better than Team Wolf though. Surely. I don't know, Peak Team Wolf was pretty good. <laughs> but Team Wolf... Uh, yeah, maybe Team Wolf's better, actually. Probably there, yeah. Still really good, but... Hope, hopefully he goes out with a bang with Season 5. I'm rooting for it. Uh, pretty Little Lies Original Sin. So Season 2 should be coming out soon, surely. I feel like it's time. Maybe in the first quarter of next year. I, felt, I thought they would have got Season 2 out for Halloween this year, but um, I guess not. Mm, I guess he has like all the writer's strike going on and stuff, so maybe that's something to do with it. I don't know. 
where do we put it? This is one of those ones where it's it's bad. It is a bad show, but it is so much fun. <laughs> it is a lot of fun to watch Pretty Little Lies Original Sin. But it is bad. And these characters are bad, and they're bad people. And they're annoying. And the amount of agendas they try to shove down your throat in this show is wild. I think we did a list of, like, one of the episodes where they touched on every little thing that they could. Uh, which you kind of have to respect at one point. I think it was, like, six different topics that they really wanted to get their opinions on i guess so but yeah like i say you have to kind of respect it at one point let's uh for obviously heroes is better because of season one but that's not gonna uh, better than supernatural i i had more fun with original sin than i did with supernatural supernatural is a better show i get it but yeah let's not get it twisted though they're, they're in the sixes this isn't like <laughs> battle of the goats or anything House of the Dragon. Um, I think I said when I did the reactions, like I think it, I think this season might be better than season one of Game of Thrones. That's wild. I don't know why I said that. I think I was calling the heat at the moment of how great House of the Dragon was, but it is not as good as season one of Game of Thrones. I don't know what I was on <laughs> when, I, when I said that, um, but it's still really great. It's still really great. I think it's set the groundwork really well for the rest of the show. I'm so glad they've said that they only plan to do, I think it's four or five seasons, so very limited compared to uh, what a lot of shows kind of go on for. So four seasons sounds perfect, and just get all the writing done now. <laughs> Not all the writing, but get if they have like a, an idea of where it's going to end up and stuff, and I think they know what pisses people off when it comes to this universe now, so don't be doing none of that. Uh, let's put it for now, though, based on just season one, which ended really well. I had a really incredible final episode. And I think we can expect season two maybe next year in 2024, which is a good turnaround time because I thought we might have to wait till 2025, which had just been... I mean, we might still have to. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, let's go... It's better than The Night Of. It's better than Angel Beats. Better than Gilmore Girls. Yes. It's better written, obviously. But Gilmore Girls I have more fun with. We'll put it up. <laughs> Gilmore Girls versus House of the Dragon. Uh, I can go below Seuss as well, actually, to be honest with you. But not... Yeah, it's better than the end of the fucking world, so... Alright, Rings of Power. One of those shows that I don't think anyone has spoken about since it finished. I mean, we're waiting for season two, but... Rings of Power had one really great episode, which was, I want to say, episode six... And I enjoyed it more than most, I think. I think a lot of people were really, really harsh on this show. Um, I think sometimes, understandably so, I think sometimes it's just like, okay, you're just jumping on the bandwagon at this point. I don't think it's that bad. I think some people were saying this is like the worst show ever crafted. It's like, let's calm down a little bit. However, <laughs> I do agree with most people that it is kind of just... Kind of like how we feel about The Witcher, where it's just boring, like the... Some of the politics are really boring. You do have some fun characters in there, but it's just like you haven't given them interesting stories, so you don't care, <laughs> which is really difficult. But some of the CGI looks a little bit off, and it's just how much money they put into these episodes, and it's like, how can some of the CGI look off? Most of the CGI looks incredible, and I think the action when they kind of had it was fun, but it was more reminiscent of The Hobbit than it was The Lord of the Rings, which is what none of us wanted, so... We're going to put it in the, in the sixes for now. I think it is still mostly decent. I do think some people were a bit too harsh on it, personally, for me. But it's going to be mid-six. I don't think it's... Maybe it's meh. I don't think, it's definitely not more bad than good. It's better than Dex and New Blood. Better than Once Upon a Time. You know, better than Vikings Valhalla. Better than The Witcher. See, that's a tough one. I think The Witcher has the one-up because of season one. So we'll go there. I've got like three fantasy shows here. Maybe I should bring that one down a little bit. <laughs> I don't like that. Three fantasy shows just sat next to each other. Cyberpunk Edge Runners, Outstanding show. I'm so happy they said as well they don't plan to do more Edge Runners. I think they want to do more animated Cyberpunk, but it'll be like different characters and different stories, which I think is great. Uh, just call it like Cyberpunk something else. Cyberpunk... Sputnik, just call it that. Anything but Edge Runners, just leave Edge Runners as it was because it was amazing. It doesn't need more. Um, 
this is one of those shows actually i know we watched it last year but the more i think about it the more i come to really appreciate it and the music was so much fun the characters were great i just love like the i love anime and animated shows where it's just like a good crew like a good group which we'll talk about in a, in a minute actually because there's another show that i'm watching at the moment that has a really good crew and group <laughs> but this was one of those where i cared about pretty much all of the characters at the, at the main core so uh not as good as banshee for me better than house though yeah yeah i'd say they're like top eight not quite a nine out of ten um very very close and so maybe on rewatch it will go up to a nine because i still think of those like first three-ish episodes where it's trying to find its footing but maybe going back to those first three episodes i'll appreciate those a bit more um but yeah really really great show overall the bear i knew i was going to do this when i got to it and i'm still going to stick by it i am going to put it in the tens what's just happened oh my god i thought everything just blew up where's the bear gone the bear where are you did it die did the bear die all right i've re-added it <laughs> I, just, I just can't find it i just don't know what happened there um i am gonna put it in the tens though it's going there so technically the bear is maybe one of the best shows i've ever reacted to but i it's perfect the bear is only two seasons in so i get it it seems a bit premature to throw up to the tens the 10, and 10 out of 10s that are there at the moment are just probably not going to change. Maybe like the in-betweeners, if this is us this time next year, have softened on me a bit more than maybe that. But like if we like lost all the way to Succession, all, all the way to Avatar, they're always going to be 10 out of 10s pretty much for me. Um, the bear could still change. It could go down. Maybe it'll go up. Who bloody knows? Um, but season two was just so perfect. And I think season one was so great that the way i feel about it now is every time i think of the bear i just think 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 perfect show at the moment it just got renewed for season three thank god imagine um i think this is a show that could go on for six seasons which i rarely say about shows but i just think the the way it's paced at the moment i don't know i don't want it to like four six seasons obviously if it doesn't need it like if i'd rather four perfect seasons instead of six you know mediocre it's good ones but I don't know, I feel like there's just enough material there to really have a good lengthy show and have it potentially be one of the best shows ever created. But it got renewed for season three. I assume it'll get renewed for season four at least as well. Um, I just think it's so good. I love the bear. Can't wait for season three. Um, it, hopefully next year we'll get it, but who knows. Because we got season two pretty quickly. Uh, we got it within a year, so that was good. Go to weekly episodes, though, please. Stop with the bear releasing all the episodes in one. It doesn't need it. This is a perfect show that could be consumed weekly because it's just like one of those where season two came out, everyone spoke about it for a weekend, and then it was gone. People still talk about it because it's that well-loved, um, and I'm, like, following a lot of bear, <laughs> the bear fan account, so that makes sense. Um, but this could just be one of those shows that everyone talks about weekly. More so than House of the Dragon, because it's, it's better than House of the Dragon. Alright, Dharma. It's been a while since we watched Dharma, God. That feels so long ago for some reason, but it must have been just after we did this last time. Uh, I still think that uh, the Dharma, the singular Dharma, uh, I think Dharma's still a really great show. I think Evan Peters did a really great, exceptional job at betraying Dharma. I get it's quite a controversial show at this point. They're doing another monster story. So this, so this is going to become a thing, I guess, which I don't think needs to happen, but I guess that's what they're doing. I don't know who it's going to be about, but I think they said they're going to be doing another one of those. Um, so yeah, I do understand the controversy surrounding it, but as a show, looking at it as a show, which is what we're doing with a lot of these, um, is still great, to be honest. Probably... Uh, yeah, better than... Dharma versus Modern Family. <laughs> uh let's go maybe there like low eights for me um yeah just some great acting some really upsetting scenes obviously upsetting scenes and episodes in there and i i knew the bare minimum about dharma going into the show and learned quite a lot and obviously there's other ways i could have learned about dharma if i really wanted to but i learned about it through the dharma show so there it is <laughs> but i think it was, it was really great all right midnight club um mike Flanagan's show from last year we got mike Flanagan's other show here which we might as well do now because i did watch the finale of that about three days ago so we might as well the midnight club is definitely mike Flanagan's weakest show that i've seen 
Uh, like I've said in those reactions, Blind Manor is the only one that I need to watch now, which I might react to next year because it doesn't look like he has any shows coming out. It's films. I think he has like three films planned or something. I, I don't know. I could be wrong on that. Um, but yeah, The Midnight Club is fine, to be honest. I just uh, The ending was disappointing. I didn't love any of the characters. There's the bear. I found it. Here. <laughs> it exists. You know what? You're the OG. So you can come back up here and we'll bring this bell. I'll delete I'll delete this one later. God, you guys must have seen it and were screaming at me, sorry. Um Right, so yeah, the Midnight Club will put in I, I was more entertained by Original Sin. <laughs> I'ma be honest. The Midnight Club just had some boring moments. It had some really good moments, but I don't know, it's one of those shows I've just not thought on since it's better than Preacher probably. Maybe there. No, I prefer it just no, maybe I prefer Supernatural, actually. Yeah, absolutely fine. Fall of the House of Usher, however. It's weird to say it's like his... It's my third favourite of his, and it's still great. Uh, I think Hill House is still better, which is... I'm just going to put this there for now. So Hill House is here. Where's Midnight Mass? Because that's the... Oh, yeah, Midnight Mass is here. Um, so Fall of the House of Usher, I think... not. It didn't hit as hard as Midnight Mass for me did. And I don't. I think it's his least scary that I've seen from him. I don't think it's like scary at all. But the characters in the Fall of the House of Usher, and the story is really engaging. And it, I felt like it got better and better as it went on. Um, so, whereas I feel like Hill House kind of peaks in the middle and then still really great all the way to the end, but definitely peaks kind of with the bent neck lady. Oh my god, what an episode! Let's put it there. Yeah. Still, so still great. All three of them are very close to each other for me. But Hill House is like a very high eight. Midnight Mass. You know what? Midnight Mass. I'm going to pull up a bit actually. It's better than Bates. Not as good as Stranger Things, probably. So maybe there. Just like a tiny, tiny bit. I don't know. I love Midnight Mass. I think the di the dialogue in Midnight Mass and the location is what's the best part about that for me. Uh, Hill House is the story, the family, and the the scares. And then Hill um, Usher for me is more so the mystery of it like just kind of wondering why everything is happening i'm trying to not spoil too much but why everything's happening to these people so yeah they all are great for different reasons which i said in those reactions as well top boy i've only watched one season of uh i know it's meant to get really really great but i only watched which and i think season one was only three episodes i think they're an hour each but three episodes so a bit of catching up to do <laughs> uh based on what i've seen though fine um not blown away by it but i i get i'm not into the good stuff yet so I don't know if I will, to be honest. I, just, I don't know. I just I finished season one and I was like, okay, yeah. I don't, I don't feel like I need to jump in season two or anything. Maybe I will at some point, though. Let's put it... Um, it's better than the original Sin. Not as good as Horror Story, though, just because Horror Story season one and two are so good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 1899. Oh, my God. Can you can you remember that show? We reacted to it, so you should. <laughs> uh, yeah, 1899. Last year, I want to say then cancelled after like a week of it coming out which is ridiculous the more i think i think because we're not getting more of it you kind of just have to look at 1899 as a whole now which is really disappointing um probably meh if i'm being really honest i think because that is the whole show now is season one where we really did not get any answers and we forever will not get any answers now at this point and it just leaves it on a cliffhanger that we're never going to be able to follow up. It's not the show's fault. It's Netflix's fault. <laughs> but, I don't know. We're just never going to get answers. So, unfortunately, it's, it's going to have to be around here. Meh. Nah. Haven't thought about it since. And never will go back to it. Because we'll never get a conclusion. Oh, Yellowstone. Have I not done these yet? Okay, there should be... Let's do 1899 and 1923. These are all the same universe. So, Yellowstone is present day. Then these are the two years that they say there are. But, kind of, about the family i guess the yellowstone family um hmm this one's the weakest 1923 that one was fine i actually really liked um i've got the character's name her here this character her story was amazing i wanted more of her but she was kind of just like a side story and then kind of came into it more at the end but the main plot with the main family Eh, it it was okay. It was that's some bad CGI in there, and um, I think some of the dialogue was really cheesy in this. 
but her storyline again forgot name because it's been a while since i watched it but she was amazing so i still think it's mostly good maybe bottom bottom good it is the weakest of the three um it's better than ted lasso it's better than the mandalorian not as good as misfits maybe so maybe like there um then the second best was the og yellowstone i do like yellowstone i think the characters get on my nerves a lot they just make really bad decisions but the entertainment factor and the storylines they come up with are pretty great for the most part but then it has like random scenes where like it is like a western it's got the western vibe to it but there'll be like 15 minutes where you're just watching them ride horses and drift around on horses and do some nay nays and some trots it's like oh my god it's like i'm just watching like them fangirl over horses it's for 15 minutes it's very strange so re the pacing of the show is all over the place but when it hits it's really good it gets some really it gets some really good it gets really really entertaining a lot of the time but they just lose it very quickly as well it just can never find that momentum i feel um at least kind of where i left it maybe i'm talking a bit too harshly because season three i think or two and three i want to say in particular were, were really great and it did have that flow going but four and five it's just kind of a bit I, I don't know if they really know what they're doing <laughs> at this point so yeah maybe again better than 1923 better than orange is a new black better than cora better than new girl better than away maybe here yeah and then the best one by far it's not even close by far 1883 you don't need to watch yellowstone or 1923 to watch 1883 because it's like if you're going chronologically it would be first anyway if you're into like westerns and that kind of vibe and feel if you like red dead redemption watch 1883 because the whole thing is just like a caravan of people traveling across the country and shit happens shit goes down obviously but um yeah if you like the kind of feel and vibe of like the earlier parts of red dead redemption you'll love 1883 and I, I loved 1883 the ending was so good oh my god it's so good <laughs> um i'm gonna go not quite nine i think that might be a little bit too high but definitely a high eight i throw it to the boys i throw it to the wire i throw it to midnight mass godless is really great but i think i've heard this to godless yeah uh, oh it's very high 1883 is so good it's on amazon prime like that it's only 10 episodes only one season very limited um better than house better than cyberpunk not as good as banshee so 1883 there high eight very close to a nine but i think there maybe were a couple of episodes in the middle that i didn't love um so yeah wednesday are they filming season two of this i think they're probably doing season two now Wednesday's as good as it is because of General Ortega there we go everyone everyone knows it. everyone agrees <laughs> Wednesday would not be as loved as it is if it wasn't for General Ortega like my god I can't believe how much Wednesday like the show actually blew up I think it is good if we take General Ortega out of it it's a mid to high six I think with General Ortega involved it's probably like a mid to high seven so she does help it a lot Oh, Westworld as well. God, I've skimmed over a lot. Westworld have had another season of since as well, so let me get to that in a second. Um, better than Merlin, yeah. No, no, that's a lie. Why am I trying to say it's better than Merlin? It's not, it's be not better than Mindhunter. It's not better than Jessica Jones. It's not better than Crime Story. not better than Prime Night Lights. Okay, we're going down a little bit. <laughs> better than Cora, no. Better than Orange is the New Black, though, yeah. Man, Prime Orange is the New Black. Okay, it's better than Orange is the New Black because Orange is the New Black just went on for far too long, to be honest. Um, so yeah, uh, Westworld's going down, season four. Eh. I can't believe it got cancelled. They were going to try and do one more season and they were just like, no, we're not going to wrap up any of that. So it's like 1883 or I've got 1899, sorry, there's so many years <laughs> of shows I've read to, but where we're just never going to really get a satisfying ending to Westworld and therefore never going to go back to it. Season one of Westworld was so good, I just never they were never able to recapture that so disappointing um it's better than big little lies so still a seven i think but maybe i don't know season one does help it a lot to be fair maybe like <laughs> it's so hard when you have to think of the bad seasons as well 
Money Heist is a bit high. Let's calm down with that. Let's get that below Hannibal. Okay, yeah, Westworld there. I'm happy with that. Below My Hero Academia. Grey's Anatomy, we are... So we haven't even started it, I don't think, when we... Yeah, because I started that in January of, of this year. So we're quite a few episodes into Season 3 at this point, about halfway through. So we're on a, on a bit of a roll with it. Um, really great show. I, yeah, very addictive. I can see why people just binge Grey's Anatomy because it does have that addictive feel to it of wanting to just, oh, just put on another, put on another kind of thing. Um, obviously, I'm going through a slower pace because I'm doing reactions to it. So i uh, got to take my time, unfortunately. But... Not quite an 8 just yet, but maybe a high 7. Hmm. Yeah, for it, maybe not as good as a tower, you're not... Maybe... It's better than Team Wolf. I'm good with it there, I think. High 7 at the moment has more potential. I feel like they have... I've given a couple of 10 out of 10s now where it just... Ha Sometimes I'll just throw out an episode that is outstanding... And then you will just get some episodes where it's very by the books. Um, I think it's one of those shows where I was like, if you could just minimise the amount of episodes a little bit, I think you'd have a better pacing. But it's fine. Um, really, really good show and excited to see more. I feel like I'm not in like... Well, I say I feel like I'm not in peak Grey's Anatomy yet, but a lot of people say season two's the best season, so I don't know. Uh, which was really great. <laughs> the Glory, uh, which we... The, the best thing about The Glory is it, it ended, <laughs> which sounds harsh, but it had 16 episodes and it wrapped everything up well. It didn't feel the need to really drag anything out and did what it needed to do and had a satisfy, satisfying ending while doing it. I felt like if this was like multiple seasons, it would become like Elite or something where it just turns to crap. But uh, yeah, really good show. Really liked the characters. I think it, like I say, wrapped everything up really, really well for the most part. Um, some really surprisingly great actors in there as well. So, let's go... It's better than Wednesday. Maybe... Here. Very good show. Not quite great. I think it had great episodes in there, but I think when you look at it as a whole... Um, I think it's just like some of the episodes are a bit too long. I think they're like an hour each. And sometimes it does drag a little bit with the pacing, but... Not too bad. Doesn't damage it. The Last of Us. Hmm. <laughs> I feel like I've softened on The Last of Us a little. Just a tiny bit since it came out. I think the finale was very rushed. Um, I still don't love Bella Ramsey as Ellie. If I'm being completely honest. I think some people have been way too harsh on Bella Ramsey. I think those people are wild. I think for me though it's like... I have obviously I've played the game. The game's my favorite game of all time. I loved The Last of Us. Um and I think Pedro Pascal captures Joel very well. And I think Bella Ramsey does a very good job in the show of The Last of Us, but I don't think it's an incredible job at portraying the Ellie from the game. And it's hard to differentiate it because I've played the game so many times throughout the ten years since it came out. So it is hard to part it. I know you meant to, like the game and the show are two separate things. I get it. Um, but you can't help but not. It's, I kind of feel like how people probably felt who read Game of Thrones and <laughs> watched the show, watched the show, and were very critical on it. So I get it. Um, that sounds like a knob, <laughs> but I don't know. I just love the game so much, and I don't think this was able to reach the highs of the game at all. I still think it, it sounds like I hate it. I don't. I still think it is a very, very good show. But I think people who are like, oh yeah, Bella Ramsey, like Bella Ramsey's been nominated for an Emmy. And people think like they should win. I don't even think I don't even think Pedro Pascal should win. It's like we're in the same year as The Bear and Succession. Can we calm down? <laughs> I'm better called Saw, which has never won an Emmy, which is wild. Um, so it's still mostly great. <laughs> so I've just said all that. And I'm like, yeah, still going in the eight out of tens. I just think it's not like a high eight for me. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. Some people, I think. Some people think it's like a 10 out of 10. I just don't see it yet. Yet. Maybe there's time. Yeah, I just felt like Ellie in the show was kind of unlikable for the first half. And then they got really good in the second half. And then you did have a really, really bland episode with the Left Behind DLC episode. That was... No matter how you cut that episode, it is bland. They didn't have chemistry. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but then you had some... I think about three to four outstanding episodes in there. And then like five really good episodes in there so 
We'll go an eight overall. Uh, do I prefer it to House of the Dragon? Ooh, do I prefer The Last of Us or House of the Dragon? That is a tricky one. I prefer it to all these. I prefer it to Dharma. I prefer it to that. But that's kind of this is kind of the bit where I'm stuck at. I think I do. <laughs> I think I do. Yeah. Okay, we'll put it here for now. Mid eights. Episode three. Oh, I love that episode three. So good. Nick Offerman. There. He, if anyone's going to win an Emmy from The Last of Us, it's got to be Nick Offerman for episode three. Smiling friends. Give a season glep. We have glep, my boy. I need season two. And I'm so excited for more Smiling Friends. I don't know. That's just one of those shows that I'm like, I need more, please. I know they're making it, so we are getting it. But I love Smiling Friends. I don't know. I've rewatched it so many times since... Uh, I reacted to it. I don't know. I've just been rewatching those. Even while I was reacting to it, I was saying that I've, I've rewatched this episode. I rewatched this episode. Uh, so funny. I love the characters. The animation just works so well. It's my. I don't, it's not for everyone. I get it, but it is just perfectly my kind of humor. Um, so, I do think like the finale and the premiere weren't great, but then I don't know, like Mister Frog and when they went to hell and stuff. Oh, so many good episodes. I can. You can just rewatch it. It's like ten minutes. Ten minutes an episode is so good. So I hope with season two they keep the ten minutes per episode, but give us more episodes, like twelve episodes in the season or something. Would be would be that'd be nice. I'd appreciate that one. Uh, let's go. Well, this is such a hard one to rank because overall content wise, you have an, what an hour and a half of Smart and Friends if you add up all the episodes. I throw it to the boys. Um. Up here is a bit wild. Maybe I shouldn't. Go, maybe I shouldn't go this high up. Maybe there. Maybe there. Yeah, I love smiling friends. I'm very excited for more smiling friends. Uh, Barry. Oh, Barry. Oh my God. This could have been. This was this close to being. A ten out of ten. I think. I think it was this close. It didn't fumble it. I don't think this is a, like a horror story like Game of Thrones or Sex Education where it's like, oh no, you fumbled that ending. Is bad now. I don't want to rewatch Barry. It's not that bad. I do think the final four episodes, though, it's very. I don't know. It just kind of became a bit generic. It became what I thought Barry was going to be like when I first went into it. And Barry was so different to any other shows I'd seen, which is what really worked about it. So it was weird that they kind of. I think it was a brave choice to do what they did in the final four episodes. It was different to the rest of the show, but. I loved what they were doing with the rest of the show, so why would I love them changing that up? I don't know. Um, it's not a bad ending. I think Barry as a whole, minus the, those four episodes, is like a 9.5 out of 10. I think it's very, very close to a 10. However, with those four episodes involved and the fact it was the final four episodes, so it's like the ending of the show, um, it does bring it down a bit for me. So yeah, it could have been here. Like it could have been up here, to be honest. Not quite a ten. I think that would have been a bit wild, but um, including the four episodes that we had, it's still going to be a nine. I think. I think. Mm, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. At the top of eight, so we'll do like eight point nine <laughs> or something like that. I just yeah, I love Barry. I love Barry to pieces, but uh, those final four episodes, I, I would not. I would have preferred something a bit different to what they did, if I'm being completely honest. So, a bit of a shame, but uh, the rest of the show, you can't, you can't squander how amazing the rest of it was. And again, to reiterate, this is not like a horror story. The final four episodes ruined the show. It's just, it was up here, and then it was kind of here <laughs> for the ending, which is a bit of a shame, but yeah. Uh, Yellow Jackets. Oh my god, I... Showtime of the worst. That, this is like the only show where I just... Well, one of the few shows where I just have given up trying to upload the reactions to YouTube. Um, <clears throat> I thought we were past like trying to strike channels for reaction videos, but apparently not. Because Showtime did it when I tried to react to Dex and New Blood, And they did it again with Yellow Jackets. They were emailing like, If you don't take down these, we're going to blow up your channel. It's like, okay, well, I'm not playing that game then. So you can't find the Yellow Jackets reactions. I apologise for that. I did actually react to seasons one and two. Um... But a shame that they won't see the light of day unless Showtime really changed. And I, I said after that, like, I'm never doing a Showtime show 
ever again <laughs> ever again if they're going to sit there trying to strike the channel then i'm just not gonna bother with any of their shows that's watching them off camera or reacting to them i just i, I can't be asked I, I think they think they've got the creme de la creme of tv shows just like you have dexter and yellow jackets which by the way season two is extremely mid so you barely have yellow jackets at this point <laughs> Season 1 was really good. I really enjoyed Season 1 of Yellow Jackets, but Season 2 uh, was fine. Season 2 it brings it down a bit for me. So we're going to go... Um, I'll put it at the top of 6. I prefer The Society at this point. They're both very similar, actually. The Society and Yellow Jackets. Season 1 of Yellow Jackets is better than anything in The Sixers. I think. But Season 2 included... There. All right. What's this? Banana fish. I've not finished this. I, th I think I added it because I thought I would have finished with it by now, but I've not. So we'll leave that there for now. I'm halfway through the show, but I just haven't watched it in about six months at this point. Uh, my Dress Up Darling. This was a strange one. This was really good. Then it was really mid. And then like the last three episodes were really good again. Uh, again, I like romance anime, so it's probably going to win me over. But I do think it kind of start to stumble i was a bit worried i was like okay we're just kind of doing the same thing and it introduced like a new main character in the second half that was pretty boring to be honest so i didn't love that but it did save it in the last kind of couple of episodes of the season so i think we have a season two come in so i'll be curious what that's like but for now it was in the high sevens then it went down to like a five if i'm being really honest and then came kind of came back a bit so Let's put it, I'm going to put it in the sevens, but probably the low sevens for now. It's better than Hollywood. Um, not as good as Made in the Abyss. Probably there. Yeah. Good overall, but hopefully they can, I don't know, just pace it a bit better with season two. Chernobyl. Yes, I've watched Chernobyl off camera. I didn't react to it, but obviously. <laughs> um, only, what was it, six or five episodes? So very short. Very well paced, extremely well acted. When I first tried to watch this, when it came out in, I want to say 2019, I did episodes one and two, and I was just bored. I was like, oh, no, it isn't for me, I guess. And I thought, you know, I'll give, I'll give it another chance. I'll give it another shot because everyone says it's one of the best limited shows of all time. Everyone is correct. It is <laughs> uh, not quite a 10 out of 10 for me, but very, very close. Um, probably there. Uh, just. You know, five episodes, there's no real downtime in there. I learned a lot <laughs> watching this show. Like, I learned a lot of kind of what happened during that time. So, it is a very interesting show. It is a bit slow paced at times. It is just very dialogue heavy. But the makeup and again, the acting, the acting is so good. Some of the best acting I've seen in a, in a limited show in uh, this year. Some of the best acting I've seen as well. So, highly recommend Chernobyl. Um,. Queen Charlotte, the spin-off to Bridgerton. Made me cry my bloody eyes out of this show. That finale is lethal. <laughs> that, not even the finale. The final scene of this show is absolutely lethal. Uh, but so well done. Still, still tear up a bit thinking about it. But overall, I think, again, the ending is like a 10 out of 10. But overall, the show, I'd probably say... Hmm... Could it be an 8? I don't think so. I think it's a high 7. I think it's a high 7. Like, maybe here for me. Very close, but if it's going to be in the 8s, it'd be like the bottom 8s, but I've got to keep in mind, like, the first... It's only 6 episodes, and the first couple of episodes was, like, fine, I think, and then it started to get really, really good. So, you're saying one third of it is fine at that point, and then the rest is kind of really good to great. So, overall, like, I can't put it above The Walking Dead for me. That just doesn't make sense. Uh, but, yeah very surprised i will admit i was very wrong about the show because when it was announced and released i was like oh this is gonna be bad like bridgerton's at bridgerton only has two seasons and we're already doing a spin-off show to it i thought i was felt a little bit rushed about a character that i wouldn't say i loved as well with queen charlotte but it really worked made me appreciate queen charlotte's character way more uh, going in season three of bridgerton so yeah they did a very good job with that mayor of kingstown oh my god i've got to watch this Watch this off camera, thank God. Um, season one of Mayor of Kingstown was decent. This is the same guy who did uh, the Yellowstone 
1883 and all that. So I was in like, uh, I forgot his name, um, Taylor Sheridan or something like that. Uh, he's in Sons of Anarchy, actually. He's the cop for the first two seasons. But yeah, he created all these shows. So I was in that zone. I was like, okay, I'll just do Mary of Kingstown because I might as well if he's making that as well. Season one, pretty good. Season two, terrible. Terrible. Oh my God. This is one of those shows where they every single character feels the need to drop the f bomb every three seconds. Watch an episode of season. Don't do it, but theoretically, watch an episode of season two and count how many times they just say the f word. I don't care. Like I, I swear in all my reactions, I'm like, I, I really don't notice it in shows. But when I'm sat there and I'm noticing how many, every sentence, every sentence, I just go. Fuck this, fuck that, fuck, fuck, fuck every five seconds. It's so annoying. And it makes, I think it just makes for like lazy, poor dialogue. And they did it in season one, but it just wasn't as noticeable. It was just like, like normal amount. Season two was horrendous for it. And to add on top of that, the story was boring. The characters were drull. Um, so more bad than good. I'm going with um, Mayor of Kingstown. We're going there. Season one was like a six, I'd say, had like potential. Then season two. Let me check actually. And what did I give season two? Uh, Mayor of Kingstown. I want to say I gave it like a four. Um, but I gave season two a three. Okay, a three out of ten. And give season one a seven. Okay, so maybe maybe a bit higher than a six. Just terrible. Yeah, really don't bother. What what were the, what were the episode ratings? Seven, seven, six, six, five, seven, five, six, four, five. So j just mid as all hell. Season two is a mess. Lex focus, just random stories. So yeah, this guy gets it. Let's give them a like. Um, yeah, bad, bad show. All severance, severance. When season two of that meant so oh, severance is so good. Reacted to this one, of course. Um, where obviously it's going to be at least an eight. The story and plot and mystery of this is so good. I think I just binged like the final four episodes in one day, uh, reaction-wise, just because I, I really wanted to know what happened. Uh, but yeah, very excited for season two. I hope they can keep that mystery going, because I think this has a lot of potential. It's like that feeling I got from early Lost, where it's like a whole... Not quite to the extent of Lost, like I was so into the mystery of Lost. This is almost there. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of questions that I want to know. <laughs> and I'll probably rewatch season one before two comes out. Um, maybe... For now, very close to a 9, not quite there for me. I think I had moments in there that were 10 out of 10s, maybe there for now. Very high 8, very, very high 8. And very excited to see what they do next with it. Alright, just a few more left, because obviously we don't need to do the bear, so that can go there. So these two we don't need to do yet. The idol. Is the idol worse than Berserk 2016? What did it give the idol? It must have been a 1. I can't imagine. Or a 2 or a push. A 2, yeah, okay. that's that's. I'm fine with the 2. Why did I give it a 2? Probably because Lily Rose Depp did perform. <laughs> she, she wasn't terrible in it. Everyone else was terrible, but... She was decent, and the cinematography at times was good. You can't deny that. Like some of the lighting and the cinematography, and the fact it was filmed on film, like good elements to there, to there for sure. That stop it being a one, but it's still a two. Like let's let's not get it twisted. Uh, yeah, let's just put it at the bottom and leave it at that. I've said all I need to say about the idol. It also had Jen Jenny from Blackpink in. So there is that. Take that as you will. <laughs> the Crowded Room, one of the most overhated or underappreciated shows of the year, I think. Not great. I don't want it to make it sound like it's like a little God's gift, but this, again, I said in the reactions, but I think when this came out, it got a 20 something percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Wild. Wild. Solo. The, act the acting is great in the show. The first four episodes were a little bit slow paced, but I think at the midway point of the show, it really, really starts to pick up. And the ending, I thought, like, the final couple of episodes were actually amazing. So, I thought this is so 
thrown to the dogs for no reason and no one talks about it now because obviously no one was really talking about it when it even came out but I don't know. I, I really appreciated it. I think after the first four episodes, I think the first four episodes, I was kind of understanding why it's getting the bad ratings, but from episode five onwards, I think it really started to pick up. So, again, not amazing. It's not going to go in the eights or anything, but uh, I'd say probably not as good as Wednesday. Maybe there, to be honest. I think like a mid to low seven makes sense for it. Uh, check it out. Kind of get your own. Don't don't not watch this because of the ratings that you saw is what I will say about the Crowded Room. Uh, so maybe give it a shot. Saying that though, it was airing at the same time as The Idol, so maybe I was just appreciating it a lot more. One Piece, obviously not the anime, but the Netflix original. I know, oh my god. Is it a Netflix original if it's based off an anime? I guess. Uh, I, I love this show. I think it made me want, which I think it did for a lot of people, it made me want to give the anime another sh a shot. Because I did try the anime a few years ago and I just thought it was very slow paced, but I might watch like a more trimmed down version. But I don't know. I don't like. I don't really like doing that with shows like a trimmed down version. But a thousand episodes is insane. A thousand plus episodes. But as for the, not talking about the anime. As for the Netflix one, pretty great. Did I give it an eight? I feel like I gave it an eight out of ten. Um, probably a low eight if I'm being really honest. But yeah, not as good as Squid Game or Daredevil. But probably there to be honest. I prefer it's Heartstopper. Yeah, it's like an 8.1 or something at the moment. It's a really great start to the show. Really like the characters. I think the CGI and the sets that they were able to build actually looked really, really good. Um, and I got more invested in the story as it went on. I think a lot of people went into the show expecting trash, especially because the Cowboy Bebop uh, Netflix show is meant to be god-awful. But this was a huge surprise, if not one of the best, biggest surprises of the entire year, to be honest. So... Yeah, really enjoyed One Piece. A lot of fun. Just like a really fun show to watch and react to. Beef with Steven Yun. Oh, I love Beef. Are they doing a season two of Beef? I'm not sure if I've heard anything. I know it came out a couple of years. Oh, no. It came out this year, I think. But I think it was like very early this year. Like maybe February or something. Um, so good. So good. Check out Beef if you haven't. It's on Netflix. It's ten episodes. Or maybe even eight episodes. Um, just... I don't even know how you explain this with that. It's by A24, so it has like kind of weird vibe about it. I get like an A24 vibe about it, which is... I'm always going to love that. Why not? Uh, great two main characters. I think their chemistry, not even romantically, but just their chemistry on screen together is so well done. And then all the side characters are a lot of fun. Some really good music in there. And I felt like every episode ended and made you want to jump into the next one as well. Really funny as well. I think the comedy worked for the most part with this. I didn't love the final episode, if I'm being honest. I think that was maybe one of the weaker episodes. But I get why they went about it the way they did. Uh, and I think about like, the last five minutes were really amazing, so that kind of made up for it. But like, yeah, I would say if I had to come up with a reason why it's not incredible, like a 9 out of 10 or something, it would be like the last episode if I had to be really nitpicky. But um, I still think the last episode was really good. <laughs> it's just everything else was up here, so... Which seems to be a running theme with some of these shows. Let's go... Uh, it's better than all these. It's better than Jiu-Jitsu. It's better than Sex Education at this point. Fall of the House of Usher, I preferred it to. I watched it twice now as well, so that says something about the show. Or one and two-thirds. Uh, maybe not as good as Midnight Mass, so... There. Yeah. High eight for me. Really, really great show. I hope we get a second season, but at the same time... I felt like you could leave it at where they left it. So I think they said they were going to do a season two, but it'd be different characters, which I don't know about that. We'll see. I think doing that with a show can either go hit or miss. So How I Met Your Mother, I've not technically finished season one yet, but we only have three episodes left as of recording this. So let's just say we'll rank it, even though I don't really like ranking shows, but at least having done a first season. But I'm going to do Normal People in the OC as well and not finish those. So scrap that rule. I'm getting rid of that rule this year. Uh, How I Met Your Mother... Like I say, three episodes left. The first half was fine. I was like, but I had to keep reminding myself that I, I thought the first half of the first season of Friends was fine as well. And then, look, I mean, look where that ended up all the way. Well, I still have to actually scroll to even get up to it. But, uh, all the way up here. So I wanted to give it the benefit of the doubt that some of the jokes weren't really landing for me. I didn't love really any of the characters apart from maybe Lily I thought was decent. Again, this is only the first half of the season because wait for it. Um, and the stories weren't really hitting for me. 
and I think with a sitcom is it's got to be done especially early on to the jokes like the jokes hitting and they weren't for the most part then the first the first off had some surprise episodes like episode five and I think episode eight I think it did have some like really good ones in there the second half of the season though ever since the wedding episode where Ted met Victoria I felt like they've found good storylines not just for Ted where it's kind of made him a bit more likable um, but for all the characters, I felt like all the chemistry, like they're pairing up Barney and Robin to just go do like laser quest or something and just hang out. Um, to be maybe something like Marshall and Robin, like they're doing random pair ups and stuff, which adds to the dynamic of the friendship a lot more. The jokes are hitting a lot more, but the m- most important thing is I just think the storylines for all these characters, they actually have some storylines now and uh, they're, they're all really working. And I think the chemistry between all the characters, even Robin, who was like the weakest for me. Even Robin's getting pretty good now. So I've not finished season one yet. I still have three episodes left. But the second half has been way better than the first half. So right now, it's a tricky one because some of the jokes are really bad. <laughs> some of the jokes fall utterly flat. But a lot of the jokes with New Girl fall flat. And even a lot of the jokes with Friends fall flat. So I can't be too harsh on it. It's still really trying to find its footing. Uh, so I get it, but for right now, I'm gonna say there, top of six, and let's be honest, it's gonna go higher than that uh, when we get to season two and three, I'm sure. Um, so it seems a little bit harsh right now, but I am taking into mind how I felt about the first half of the season, which wasn't great to be honest. Uh, but the second half has been a huge, huge improvement. So Glee is only above it because seasons one to three and four of glee were really really great i can't i can't i can't deny that let's be honest so (laughs) glee would actually probably be in the high sevens if it wasn't for season five and bloody six which just butchered any anything that show had going for it um fargo i've only done season one i've heard season two is even better than season one so uh yeah i thought season one was good i wasn't blown away by it uh again thought the acting cinematography was really good but I expected a bit more because I think a lot, a lot of people really hyped up this show and said it was. I think it actually peaks in the first episode. <laughs> I think the first episode of the first season is incredible, and then it never really kind of reached that high again for me. I don't know. Um, a lot of good episodes in there, and I think it ended really well with the f- final couple of episodes. But yeah, I want to give season two a shot because a lot of people said season two. I think it's like a different set of characters and stuff, so uh, I can I can really watch it at any point and not be lost on the storyline or anything. But as of right now, I'll probably go maybe there. I think it's a good show, but I wasn't blown away by it. Like, a lot of people compared this to, at the time, because I think it came out around the same time, season one of True Detective, and I'm like, bro, not a shot is season one of Fargo close to being as good as True Detective season one, but sure, sure, sure. Uh, Gen V, we just finished season one. Um, hmm. I think Gen V is kind of, would you say Gen V's essential viewing if you watch The Boys? Obviously, it's The Boys spin-off. Because apparently season four of The Boys, it came out on Twitter that season four of The Boys is going to take place three days after the ending of Gen V. So I guess we don't know until we watch season four of The Boys, so it's kind of hard to tell. Um, but either way, very good show. Not as good as the, any of the seasons of The Boys, I would say. Really like the characters. I felt like the dynamic and the bond between the group got better as it went on especially in the last couple of episodes so there is that the pals of fun obviously still carry all the gore and surprise moments that the boys manages to do as well uh, i just would say i wouldn't i wouldn't say i loved the main plot with this one um and, I, and it took me a while to really get into some of the characters like emma for me was great off the bat but then some characters like marie and on, even Andre, who I still don't love, it just took a bit longer to really get on board with their characters. So, for right now, we're going to say a mid to low seven. Has a lot of potential, though. Well, I'm intrigued to see what they do with it going forward. For right now, though, maybe better than Crowded Room, yeah. Uh, better than Wednesday? No. So, probably there. All right, just a few more left. Invincible. Finally, after two years, caught up, <laughs> and season two has just started, uh, and yeah, I was way into it more the second time I watched it this time, so uh, yeah, I wanted to get the reactions done to episodes five and eight, just to kind of have them on the channel, and not just jump into season two, 
so yeah, but this could change again because season two has just started, so this might change depending on certain episodes. But right now, I'm feeling pretty great. Really love the characters this time around. The animation improvement in season two has been pretty substantial, I'd say. Um, we'll see what they do, but I think for right now, I'm going to go. I third One Piece. No, no, I did not. No, I didn't. I didn't feel One Piece for Mids, but actually, that's that's a lie. <laughs> I don't even know why I said that. I think I'm just trying to, in my mind, figure out where this is going to go. You're all I need, all I prefer, so... Maybe here. Bottom of 8 for me. I don't love it as much as some people do. I know a lot of people think it's like a 10 or a 9 out of 10. Not quite for me just yet. Uh, I do still prefer the boys, because I know they get compared a lot as well. But, um, really great show. I preferred it a lot more the second time around. Him and her. I only added this one last minute because I'm watching this off camera. I watched this. It should have really been added when I did this last year because I watched seasons one to four when it came out ten years ago. I want to say it finished in 2013. So um, over ten years ago, I remember watching every episode as they came out. Um, and I'm re-watching it now. I just finished season one, halfway through season two. Really easy watch really fun characters, some great comedy in there that might be a little bit outdated <laughs> with some of the comedy. I think some of the jokes now, I'm like, I don't know if they'd get away with saying that <laughs> in 2023, but I don't know. I think it, I think it works for the show and I just love Steve and Becky. I think they're a really great couple. I forgot how much I actually really loved this show, to be honest. Uh, it's on BBC iPlayer. I'd recommend it if you want just an easy watch. They're in like 30 minute episodes, six episodes a season. Um, yeah, it's just the whole show is set in their apartment and it's done in real time. So 30 minute episodes is like 30 minutes of real time for something that they're doing on that day, I guess. Just, yeah, very easy watch. Fun characters in there. Uh, nothing serious. It's not You're not going to get the most in-depth storyline ever with this or anything. But for a comedy, which it is, manages to do the job. So I'm going to say, let's go for a comedy. It's hard. And I know season four is actually really, really good. So when I get to that again, this might go up a bit because it actually ended on a really amazing season, I seem to remember. Uh, it's not as good as Shit's Creek. I prefer Shit's Creek. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Like I actually jumbled around in my mind a bit there. I prefer him and her to Shit's Creek. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, let's... Uh, I see it's it's just such an easy watch. I love a good easy watch. Easy to tell you, minute. It's fine. Don't take yourself too seriously. Let's go there. Him and her. Maybe it'll go in high. Maybe it'll be in the tens. It won't, but still. The summer I turned pretty. We're a couple of episodes in season two as of recording this, so this might go up or down depending on how I feel about season two. I think it's a good show. I think it's a show like this is very easy to shit on because it's just very by the books love triangle. Play some Taylor Swift and Olivia Rod Riglington in there and You've got a show, I guess, but the acting's good for the most part. For the most part, some of it is wildly bad, so let's not get that twisted. But for the most part, from the main and stuff like that, I think it's pretty good. And the love triangle works because I think I can see both sides with Conrad and Jeremiah. I think they're both potentially good love interests for Belly. So it's doing what it's meant to do, which is to have a conflicting love triangle for people. I'm still team Jeremiah, but I will say a couple of episodes in season two. Conrad's hot on the heels, so this could change. We'll see, though. Uh, as of right now, I'm going to go low seven. It's not. I won't say it's a great show or anything, but it's a it's a fun watch. Like I'm never bored watching it. Like I'm always into it when I'm watching it. So it does its job well. Let's go. <laughs> the summer I turned pretty above the Mandalorian. You know what? Yes, it is, and I'm not even sorry about it. <laughs> Better than Young Royals, uh, no, because Young Royals Season 1 exists. But Summer I Turned Pretty Season 1 was better than Young Royals Season 2. I I can't put it above Mad Men, that'd be wild. Um, not above Misfits, there. Low 7, I'm happy with that. The OC, oh my god. The pacing of the OC is so good. Don't worry, I, this goes up on Wednesday on YouTube, so the OC will begin on YouTube next week it's either next week or the week after it is coming because i've had a few comments about where's the oc coming to youtube it is on its way uh i just need to make sure patreon is 10 episodes ahead at least and i didn't get episode 10 it's either next week or the week after so i, I don't know 
Uh, but as of right now, I'm going to be honest, guys. This show, I'm surprised by how well-paced this show is. I'm only 12 episodes in season one. Season one's like 27 episodes, so it is very long. But it is only four seasons, so that gives me hope um, that it keeps that... I don't think it'll keep that, this pacing going all the way through. I'm kind of waiting for it to slow down a little bit just because of how well-paced it actually is. But right now, the characters are great. It's funny. I love the setting. I love the bonds between these characters. They're not rushing any of the romances or the bonds between like Ryan and Sandy. It just feels like it's very well-paced. And I know where I want it to get to with some of these relationships, some of these bonds. But I'm in no rush to get there. And the show isn't in any rush to get there either. I'm waiting for Ryan to be like, I love you, Dad. To Sandy. And I'm like, that's going to hit hard. But don't do it in season one. <laughs> uh, if, that, if that happens at all, I will love if that happens. Or he calls like Seth his brother or something. Oh, or mom to Kirsten. I can see it all. I can see it all now in my mind. But as of right now, I mean, the pacing's so good. Uh, I'm going to be honest. Better than Tree Hill. Might be going a bit too high. Let's slow down a little bit. There, mid eight. I'm feeling a mid eight for the OC right now. Again, we're all like currently watching it and midway through season one, so that could really change. But uh, what we got left? Cowboy Bebop and normal people. Cowboy Bebop is great. I tried to give this a shot in 2016, I want to say, and I thought it was mid as all hell. I was like, okay, I don't, uh, don't care about this. I got ten episodes into the show, I think, and stopped watching. Um, really wasn't for me. Cut to 2023. Oh, the show's so good. <laughs> This was the other show I was talking about where I feel like the crew and the group is just so strong. Spike, Jet, Faye, uh, the new character who's just come into it, so I always forget her name, but she just came into it like two episodes ago, so she's very new. Ayn, is it Ayn the dog? I, the t I gave a 10 out of 10 to the episode with the alien, <laughs> all the alien references. If you know, you know, that's such a good episode. Music, amazing. The aesthetic and the animation for the show is outstanding. Um, the dynamic between the group and Spike is so cool. He's just such a cool character. He oozes cool. If you want the definition of a cool character, it is Spike from Cowboy Bebop. I'm telling you, it's so good. So, I, w I won't say I love it. I don't really see... A lot of people consider this like the definitive anime show of all time. I'm not quite there with it yet, but I am in the eights. I am in the eights. I prefer Attack on Titan. I prefer Jiu-Jitsu just... Just is very close, so but Jiu Jitsu is where it's at right now, it's just wild. But Cowboy Bebop, I'm gonna be honest, it's probably like a it's better than The Last of Us, yeah. Maybe there, really, really great show. And I'll... I've heard the second half's even better than the first half, so that probably will go up. And then finally, finally, we have God, I've been talking for an hour and 50 minutes, Jesus, basically, film length. Uh, normal people which I only have two episodes remaining of. This show is depressing as all hell. If you thought This Is Us was depressing, wait till you get to, like, the second half of Normal People. Oh, my God. I had two episodes in a row, which was just depression. And does it very well. It captures that feeling very, very well of feeling, like, lost, not really sure what you want to do with your life, or you're not happy with where you are at life. But it's not a fun watch. Like it's, I don't know. The acting though. Uh, Paul Meskel. The episode I just saw. Episode ten was the episode I just saw. Uh, you know the scene if you've seen the show. Some of top five, top ten acting I've seen that I've reacted to. Not that I've seen, but that I've reacted to in a show. Uh, I think Paul Meskel in that episode is so heartbreaking. So it's just too real. It's one of those scenes where it's like this feels too real. Um, so yeah, I'll leave it at that. If you haven't watched Normal People, you have to be in the right headspace for it, I think, definitely. But especially with the second half of the show. But if you're in a if you're in a good headspace with it, go for it. Uh, as of right now, like I say, two episodes left, so I can't really say how it ends because it is only one season as well. It's only 12 episodes long, so it does depend how it ends. But right now I'm feeling... I am feeling an eight with it. Uh, maybe there, like a mid-eight. Again, depending how it ends, could go up a bit or down. But there we go, guys. Oh, let me take a swig of my... I didn't even drink anything. I just spoke straight for all of that. Mm. There we go. 
feels good. Doesn't taste very good. It's a bit flat now, but feels good. Feels good. <laughs> uh, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten shows in the top down. We have uh, we actually have ten shows there, which is great. And Toradora, you would be there. You would be there if you just. Oh, if the ending was just a little bit better. Um, God, there's quite a few animations high up here actually. So Avatar: The Last Airbender in the top ten, and these three just taking the top of the nine out of tens. Um, and Naruto could be up there, depending. Planet is amazing. Um, Attack on Titan could... I could see Attack on Titan going into the 9s. I don't quite know if I'd see it as a 10. Because, I don't know. I think it really depends. I think it really, really depends. But I see potentially Attack on Titan going into the 9s. So it's, I would say in my top 10 animes of all time. Toradora, Hunter x Hunter, Naruto, Clanad. Super gory, or if you say, it, I don't know. Attack on Titan, yeah, Attack on Titan will be a six, I guess. Then Full Metal Alchemist, Black Lagoon. I'm only doing top ten, don't worry. I won't keep doing this, but Jiu Jitsu at nine, I think, is a little bit wild because I've only just really started to love it. But as of right now, and then Elven Lead at ten. Uh, yeah, see, that's. I'm surprised Elven Lead's in the ten. I mean, it's my list. Why should I be, be surprised by it? But anyway. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with this list. What have we got in the bad ones? The Idol at the bottom, which is, yes, absolutely. And Berserk, which is just... Berserk's more just disappointment. I'm not angry. I'm disappointed because Berserk... Berserk deserves this. Berserk, if they did an anime that was... Just respected the material and gave us everything we want from what Berserk anime should be like, Berserk would be... Maybe the greatest anime of all time. One of the best shows of all time. If they did it right, if they did it how the manga did it, does it, did it, uh, it would be the greatest show of all time, or the greatest anime of all time, great show, I don't know about that, but uh, but no, we just get absolute garbage, so thanks for that. These were mid as hell, oh no, these were all bad, more bad than good, these were all mid as hell, which uh stand by. 1899, not so much, but it's just the fact that we will never get a resolution to it, that yeah. it was all falling on, we, we need to see all three seasons, and we never will, so... <laughs> Uh, these, How I Met Your Mother will go up, but just need a bit, just a bit more time with it, and it will go up into at least the sevens. Uh, these are really good. Van Dyer's just need a bit more. I don't know. We'll see what happens, but I think season five, Walking Dead, would be in the eights, but ugh. <laughs> falls off a cliff a little bit. Uh, yeah, happy with all the great ones here. Happy with these. I need to rewatch Steins Gate. Do I need to bring any of these down, or do we all agree with these? I don't know. I don't really have any arguments to bring any down into the sevens. And then Fantastics, which was very bad a little bit. So, yeah, there we go, guys. That is the list as of right now. We will do this... Well, I'm going to do every season that I reacted to this year in 2023 ranked, as we do at the end of every single year. Well, not every single year, but end of the f a few years, I guess. Um, and then we will do this one again next year and add all the new shows and... Any of the shows that I've been re-watching or have watched off-camera or watching currently, like the Gilmore Girls, will remove and move around and stuff. So thank you for watching, guys. I've rambled on for far too long. Uh, appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time. Until then, take care. Peace.